Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now your host, Laura Sassiri. Welcome to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. My name is Laura Sassiri and I'm the founder of Supply Chain Insights. And today it gives me great pleasure to interview John Sicard. John is a longtime friend, and he is also the CEO of Canaxis. And John, I wanted to talk to you today about outside-in processes and the shifts in supply chain planning. And I'm excited that Canaxis is doing some work and investment on innovation in this area. But before we get started, I want you to tell the group a little bit about yourself, because I think, you know, you're a fascinating, you know, and a really warm personality in the space. So tell the group a little bit about you. Well, that sure is a kind introduction. Thank you for that, Laura. Okay, well, maybe I'll I'll focus on things that you can't read on LinkedIn. Let's see. uh, I have a tattoo, but I don't show people where it is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, let's say, uh, you know, people who know me best know I have a a real passion for music. You know, the vocation I thought I would follow as a teenager some 45 years ago was that I was going to be a rock drummer. I had hair considerably longer than yours, Laura. And I think Peter Frampton, if you remember that, uh, yeah. art, kind of Peter Frampton hair at the time. And uh, today I'm still in a rock band. I uh, I perform maybe four or five gigs a year. We do a lot of charity events. And I, you know, I have a studio in my house. So it's still a huge passion for me. And I really think even, you know, through, through the pandemic, uh, music was sort of that universal medicine people were desperate for. And during, obviously during the pandemic, live music literally just ceased to exist. So I have even more passion for it now, but maybe I'll I'll stop there. Favorite artist, Judd? Let's see, right now it's probably the Foo Fighters. Okay. I'm just a huge Foo Fighter fan and uh, love Dave Grohl. You know, I uh, I have a Dave Grohl snare, you know. Uh, that I play on, but and and it's very aggressive, and I'm an aggressive drummer. I'm not one of these polite, jazzy drummers. Awesome. You know, I'm more like animal or whatever, <laughs> you know, more like an animal on the drums. Awesome. Okay, so let's get that image, an animal on the drums, and let's talk about innovation and supply chain and outside-in processes. So when I wrote this recent report on outside-in processes, I sent it to you for comment along with 10 other people. And we got engaged in like almost a week discussion. I, I don't know there was a debate. It was more like, you know, how do we take this deeper? And what is your belief or your vision of what outside in processes can look like in supply chain planning? Well, first I'd say, you know, the opposite of outside in is a selfish view. It's, you know, inside out. It's what I want and I'll enforce it on you. Whereas supply chain as a practice exists solely to serve uh, a community that has demand for your products. It starts there. Uh, Otherwise, there's no need for supply chain. And so if you, you know, I've always believed that if you have sort of what I'll call the selfish perspective of inside out, I matter more than the source of demand, then, you know, it's, it, it will not drive sustainable success. You have to have an outside in perspective because that's, you know, that's your reason to serve. And so I think, you know, definitely now more and more people are realizing that buying habits are are changing. The outrageous pursuit of forecast accuracy uh, at the expense of agility is failing the uh, outside in uh, processes and people are looking for something different. Interestingly, I'd say it's not so much different. It's what you should have been looking for all along. <laughs> but John, our current processes are inside out. You know, you and I have worked a couple decades on trying to refine inside out processes. And I have spent a decade talking about demand driven and how do we build outside in, but I haven't made much progress, right? And what do you think we need to do to make that shift? Is it evolution or do you think it's redefinition? How do we do it? I think a lot of it is, it, well, it, it starts with changing your philosophy on what matters most. I'd say the most expensive mistakes happen during a sales and operations plan. Well, that by definition maybe is the boundary of, of outside in. You, you're getting much closer to the source of demand uh, there, but it's been really difficult because those processes are 
completely disconnected from the rest of supply chain operations. And so it's often been, you know, I'd say the past has been about starting with how many widgets do you think you're going to sell in which theaters for what price? And let's reverse engineer what the supply chain has to look like versus, yes, you need some sense of capacity, but let's get really good at adjusting to what actually happens from the outside in. And when you start thinking that way, well, I would say your competency, the competencies change. You know, when you start thinking outside in the, you know, the, the competencies of organizations are forced to change. And that's hard, right? Now you're talking about human behavior, uh, process change, in fact, a change in philosophy. But, you know, if we think about outside in, we've got to cross over sales and marketing, and we've got to confront the difference between sales driven and marketing driven to be market driven. And, you know, the gap between sales and operations has grown threefold over the last decade as, you know, the supply chain has become more narrow, a function within a function. How do we manage that change dynamic? Yeah, I'd say it starts with transparency. When I talk to most practitioners and I'll ask them, does the sales side of your house trust the operational side of your house? I usually get a giggle. As, <laughs> you know, yeah, they know. It's like, wow, not really. But that's why I part out loud. Um, Let's bring out those drums, not, right? Boom. Look, it's not because there's bad people on either side of, of those talents, let's say but there's blindness between them. And so the loss of trust has been codified in this inside out process that we've built. The thing about sales and marketing for that matter is they, they care more about reputation than we might think. The, the last thing someone wants on, on the front side of your, of your business is to make a promise that they know they can't keep because the thing that gets tarnished there is reputation. And they desperately, CEOs care about that. CFOs care about that. If I make a promise, making a promise is 10% of the problem. Keeping it is 90. And so the, the, I'd say the processes that we've had over the, the last several decades here, you know, I'll call them the inside out processes uh, to keep the lexicon consistent, uh, has created this blindness between these functions. The blindness creates mistrust. And the mistrust, obviously, uh, is is unhealthy for business. It's unhealthy for performance. But how do we get there, John? Because, you know, the current uh, taxonomy solution set is designed to be inside out, the optimizers, the models, uh, you know, and I think it requires a redefinition of the space and even a redefinition of the Rubicon as, you know, you and I yeah. were rubric as we were talking. Yeah. How do we get there? Well, for one, I think you know, the, the measurements have to change. I feel like, you know, everyone, even the last two, three decades, people would say the words, supply chain's a team sport, you know? And I'd say, yeah, I know, I know it is. But we still celebrate, you know, one team member scoring three goals, even if you lose four to three. And like the hockey analogy, you, you score a, a hat trick, but, you, and, and so, the, you know, nobody wants that person in the locker room who's saying, I, I scored a hat trick, the team lost four to three. There's nothing to celebrate. And so I think one of the things that has to change is, you know, I'd say a um, reorientation of the sport um, where, you know, success exists for the entire fabric of supply chain, not for one chain link. One of the, one of the flaws, I think, that, that we've allowed to happen over the last several decades is this notion where you should measure the success of every chain link rather than the success of the chain. And so you would end up with inventory people saying, I made my bonus, I hit my inventory targets on time and full, it's someone else's problem. And, and, and look, so how, do you, how is that a team sport when individual players are celebrating while the team ultimately loses? It's a, it's a great analogy to think about supply chain and the philosophy that has to shift. Um, the notion of outside in to me is, you know, maybe it's it's a simplistic way to look at it, but it's, you know, in my mind, it's the it's like the starting point of the conversation. Is the starting point behind the wall or outside? And it does, you know, as soon as you say the starting point of the conversation has to, by definition, start with the outside um, expectations. 
I think you'll end up changing what you measure, you know, across the, the entire system, if you will, if I'll call it, or the supply chain fabric, you'll start changing, you know, the, the what you measure and how you win. Well, and we're doing some work on the balanced scorecard with Georgia Tech based yes. on, you know, you know, an endowment or a grant that you gave Georgia Tech, which I'm very thankful for. And we're finding that 70% of market cap can be driven really at the intersection of margin and inventory. And, you know, unfortunately, we've been focused on costs, not necessarily focused on margin. And, you know, we can't win on margin if sales and operations aren't working together. No, 100% right. Um, you know, and, and I think that's one of the things that's shifting. And I'm, I'm actually, you know, as, as, as odd as it might sound, you know, the pandemic was a great marketing event for, for supply chain. It woke everyone up simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> and, so I, I, and I do, I wish never to go through, I don't want my kids to ever go through, through another one. Uh, by no means am I suggesting that. But uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And so here we are simultaneously, everyone's struck with the same challenge and it is giving birth to, let's just say, you know, it, it's making it possible to change the conversation because everyone is having the same one and thinking I've, you know, I've got to leave it better than I got it. And so, you know, I think that uh, the work that Georgia Tech is doing in reshaping the measurement systems um, is definitely part of it. And I'll tell you the most valuable thing that they're doing is they're leading with proof. They're saying, well, let's do this analysis. And so it's not just hearsay or it's not the one who speaks the most eloquently or the loudest speaker, the one who screams the most about getting it right. It's just proof. It's irrefutable fact. Um, and and I think for, for many in supply chain, that's what they're looking for. They're They're looking for proof that if I'm going to change my philosophy, I'm going to know that it's better for the next three decades. And so I think the work they're doing is, is just critically important. Well, and, you know, you can't argue with doing statistical regression analysis on data from 1982 to 2023, yeah. right? You know. So, John, any last words of advice for people that are out there saying, I know I'm inside out. But I got the system and I know I need to move past functional metrics, but it is what it is. What steps do they take? You know, I, what I tell people is, is to raise the conversation outside of a technical one. In fact, it's odd coming from a software engineer as myself. I often tell people technology doesn't matter. It really doesn't. If you're having a technical discussion before a, a discussion of technique, you're having the wrong discussion first. And so you, you have to rethink philosophy, the philosophy that matters to your, to, to your future. And to me, this notion of outside in, inextricably connecting it, tearing down all the walls, having absolute transparency tip to toe, and leading from the outside demand signals inward, is philosophical. And if you can bond on that first, and I'll tell you, when you start having conversations like that, and you're not talking about software, okay, you bond on that first, then the software requirements manifest themselves. The competencies required from your team starts to manifest itself. And you realize, oh, you know, maybe we've been establishing the wrong competence. And we're learning that there's different measurements that will yield different competencies as a result of the shift in philosophy. So it might sound, you know, kind of you know, motherhood and apple pie, but it's stunning to me how many conversations I have with practitioners. And the first thing they'll ask is, so what does your technology do? I'll say, well, that doesn't matter unless we can bond on techniques. My technology is only interesting. It'll become valuable, but only if we bond on technique. Great feedback. Well, John, thanks for joining us today on the show. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you're going to do on building innovation. I know we've got an upcoming session where we're going to roll up our sleeves and talk about that technique. And I'm hopeful that we can do great things. Thanks for joining us today. Always a pleasure, Laura. Mm -hmm.